Hello, Flight Simmers, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over all the different Windows settings so that you can get the very best performance out of our beloved Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you think that sounds interesting, then I think you should stay tuned right here for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Acknowledge, please. Acknowledge, please. Where are you? It's okay, Jack. It's not okay. I got a small plane here. I don't know where it is. Jack, a fly landed on your screen. All right, so let's dive right into this and talk about some of these Windows settings. But first, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And while you're down there, smash on that thumbs up button. Okay, so the first thing that I want to get into today is game mode. So to get to that point, just come down here to your search bar and type in game. When you do, right at the top here, it should be game mode settings. Give that a left click and it's going to open our game mode settings. As you can see, I have mine in the off position and for Microsoft Flight Simulator, that is going to be the best option. That's going to help with crashes to desktops and other various anomalies that you may get. Now this kind of leads us into our next topic, which is the HAGS mode. Now that's short for Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, and to get to that point, right over here to the right hand side, we can see related settings. We're going to tap on the graphics setting here. And when we do, this is going to open up the different graphics settings that we can choose for the PC. So currently I am testing HAGS mode on. Prior to the latest hotfix and the latest NVIDIA driver, I was not able to keep HAGS mode in the on position. I would constantly get crashes to the desktop. And if anybody else has been doing testing with this, please post your results down in the comments section and your system specs. This will really help our viewers whether this is a good option to keep on or not. As of right now, I really can't say other than off has always worked well, so test at your own will. So underneath of the HAG setting, we have the graphics performance preference, and this is where we can set the performance preference for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You just want to left click on that, go to options, and now we can choose our preferred performance setting. Once you do, you're just going to highlight what you want, give it a click, hit the save button, and you're all good to go on that screen. Now keep in mind, if anybody has any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments as well, and I'll try to answer those as best as I can. All right, so let's move on to our next topic, and that's going to be the virtual memory. Now a lot of people may not know how to get to this, so just come right down here to the search bar again, and just type in performance. When you start typing in performance, you're going to see a setting menu here that comes up that says adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. So we're just going to left click on that and it's going to bring up a nice little dialog box here so that we can set a couple things. We want to step over here to the tab that says advanced and tick on that with your left mouse button. Under the advanced tab, we have the processor scheduling. Now this is going to choose how to allocate the processor resources or power where you want it to go on your main program you're using or your background services. There's been a lot of debate on what to choose for this, so I ask the community here to post your comments down below. Let me know what you use and your system specs. But for me, I just leave it on programs and I'm good to go. So right underneath of that, we have the virtual memory page and you wanna come over here and click change. Now this is gonna be most important for the simmers that only have 16 gigs of memory. This is also probably going to help maybe for those of you who have 32 gig, but any higher than that, you really don't have to worry about this part. So the first thing that you want to do, and most of the time, this is probably going to be ticked up here at the top that says automatically manage paging size. So you want to untick that. Now, as you can see, I have two different SSD drives on this PC. So I'm just going to pick the drive that I want to use the paging size on, and that's going to be my C drive. And then we want to come down here below and tick the custom size button. And when you click that custom size button, this is now going to open up for us and allow us to put numbers in here. Now, this is also a hot topic of debate. 
there's a lot of confusion what numbers to put in here. So we're gonna go over that right now. So the paging size is gonna have two different figures. You're gonna have the initial size, which would be the minimum, and you're gonna have our maximum size. So now let's talk about how to figure out what to put in here. Now we're gonna get into a little bit of math and go over how we come up with these figures. For those of you who are running only 16 gigs of memory, here's the equation. For the initial size or the minimum paging size, you're gonna take 1.5 times 16,000 megabytes. That's gonna equal 24,000 megabytes or 24 gigabyte. So that's what your initial size is gonna be here. But remember, it's in megabytes. So you're gonna come in here and you're gonna type in 24,000 megabytes. The maximum size is going to be three times 16,000 equals 48,000 megabytes. So the maximum size that we're gonna put in here is 48,000 megabytes. And once you get that done, all you have to do is hit the set and then hit okay. You may have the apply button over here. Uh, you can hit that as well hit OK, and then you need to restart the computer for the settings to take effect. Now let's go over what these settings need to be if we're using 32 gig of RAM. So you're gonna take 1.5 times 32,000, and that's gonna give you 48,000. So you're gonna put 48,000 in your initial size, and then you're gonna come down to the maximum size. Again, we're gonna take three times 32,000, and that's gonna give us 96,000 in our maximum size. Again, we're gonna hit the set button, hit okay. If the is lit up, you can hit that as well, and then hit the okay and restart your computer for the settings to take effect. Now that is how to go over and properly set all of your virtual memory paging sizes. Next, let's move on to background applications. As you know, the least amount of background applications we have running, the better Microsoft Flight Simulator will be. So again, we're gonna come down here to the search bar and we're gonna type in background. When you type in background, you're gonna see the first thing comes up here. It says background applications. Give that a big old left click and that's gonna open up a nice menu that we can control which background applications will be running. Now, you can either come right up here to the top and turn it off completely, which is what is mostly probably recommended, is to turn off every background application. But in my case, I left this on and I just went through individually and kept the background applications that I want to allow to run while I'm using any particular program. So all you need to do is go down the list here and figure out which ones of these are important to you that you would want to have running all the time in the background and which ones you don't. So this is gonna help try to release some of those resources from your CPU. And this is the reason why in the performance options under the advanced tab, I keep this on programs because I manually come in here and turn off all of my background applications I don't want running anyway. So just a little pro tip for you. Now we're gonna talk about another very important topic, which are the power settings for your PC. For those of you who have multiple things plugged into your USB ports and find that one of those USBs may drop out during flight, well, that's because your PC may be shutting down random USB ports to conserve on power. So to adjust those, all we need to do is come down to the search bar again and type in power. The first thing that's gonna pop up here is edit power plan. Now you wanna give that a big old left click and now we've gotta do some adjusting in here. So the first things that we can set up is a turn off the display or put the computer to sleep. Now for me, I'm not using any laptop and for those laptop users, you may want to adjust these settings so that your computer does go to sleep to save on battery. But for hardwired PCs, I wanna keep this on never, and I also keep my display to turn off after 15 minutes, just in case I get up and walk away. 
Next, we're gonna dive into the meat and potatoes of this, and we're gonna click on the Change Advanced Power Settings. So the first thing you wanna do is come over here and hit on the first dropdown, and we're gonna select the Ultimate Performance option. If you don't have Ultimate Performance, then just click on High Performance, and then we can adjust some of the other settings as we go. But for me, I'm gonna tick on Ultimate Performance, and then we can move on from here. So now we need to come down and adjust some of the settings here below. So the first thing we're gonna to go to is hard disk. Turn off hard disk after. And we wanna make sure this is set to never. We don't want to put our SSD or hard drive to sleep. So the next one we wanna come down to is the wireless adapter setting. We're gonna tick on the little drop down, and then on power saving mode, we're gonna tick on that little drop down and then we can adjust this setting for maximum performance. We're gonna come right down to the USB settings. So we're gonna tick on that drop down, and then we're gonna tick on the drop down for USB selective suspend setting. We wanna make sure this is disabled. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna disable your CPU from turning off different USB ports to save power, thus, making sure that while you're in flight, that none of your USBs are gonna drop out on you. The next thing we wanna do is come down to PCI Express. We're gonna tick the drop down for that. And then the drop down for link state power management. And we're gonna turn that off as well. So once you have all these different settings set up now, all you need to do is come right over here to apply, give that a left click and then hit okay. Now all we gotta do is cancel out of that. And folks, we're all done for the day. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I want to thank everybody for joining us. If anybody has any questions, please post those down below in the comments, and I'll get right back to you. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. Smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like you. Well, to all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.